So guys, it's so great to be back here on your property uh, here in Molong, a lovely chilly morning. Tell us a little bit more about Browka and how you introduce drones into your farming practices. So Browka is a, a farming company, ultimately, that's what we've been doing for, for 30 years. But uh, since 2010, we've evolved into an ag tech company. And what, we, what we've done is tried to look at technology like drones. And Brooke has been on the journey all of the way because uh, sometimes young people see the pain point in agriculture that's a little bit traditional. So that's where we've tried to incorporate drones to solve some of those issues. Bringing Brooke back into the business, well, I think Brooke, you took the initiative, coming back onto the farm and working um, as a family business, how have you taken this role and where's it going? Yeah, well, I came back about 16 months ago, so I took the very, very traditional path out of school, you know, finished year 12, went off to uni, um, got a full-time job in corporate ag, and I guess that just opened my eyes up into, as Ben was saying, some of the pain points that we're seeing in farmers these days, and then thought there's a huge space in the ag tech space, and yeah, could pave the way, whichever way I wanted. We've got a wonderful business, traditional, original farmer and the young innovative farmer coming through and I can see how this would work for you both because you are um, moving into the space where drones are really taking off but you've also got the digital native uh, I guess title these days and the transition for farmers that haven't had any technology how are you helping or how's Browka helping I guess for us, um, we kind of utilise ourselves as a case study of how we implemented that, but the big one for us is training and giving farmers the opportunity to have a hands-on learning experience, because um, it can be a daunting experience. Ag tech is new and who knows where it's going to be in five years time, we might not even know what's coming. Um, so we have a few training programs and that sort of thing, we're more than happy to help showcase how we've implemented it on a slow and steady journey and it's just one step at a time. So yeah, at the moment we've had over 850 farmers through training. Um, so yeah, they get to come along and have a chat with us. We just talk about some case studies, possible return on investment, that sort of thing. And then they get some hands-on experience. Um, but yeah, I guess it gives them the opportunity to feel empowered, but at the same time, we're making it a safer industry through training. So we were talking to Pat McCutcheon um, and he did your drone course and we saw the benefits of how he's been using that. Um, how many uh, courses have you been delivering? Uh, so over the last 12 months, we've run around 45 courses right across New South Wales. And Pat was just another classic. Um, Pat really is a little bit like Brooke, innovative and looking forward and from a, a quite established family business. What's really interesting in Pat's uh, operation is he's looking at the opportunity to not just use drones to maybe do some of that basic scouting that they would have done using vehicles or bikes, but also to really start to acquire the weed mapping, variable rate fertilizer, those types of things where this is so new uh, 12 months ago. We were only talking about this as a concept and farmers like Pat are putting it in place and seeing the benefits. Brooke, I met you and Ben last year on your uh, course, the Drones in Technology and Farm Mapping Data and Analysis. And it was the second course that I absolutely love and realise drone technology and innovation in agriculture is a game changer. Can you explain more about that? Yeah, so we have two courses um, which Sharon sat and absolutely loved and we're lucky enough to meet. Um, but yeah, we've got one which is drones in ag focused on a lot of safety and um, all of that sort of thing, making sure they just have the basic foundations to step into data collection and getting a little bit more out of it. So yeah, one big part of it is just using it safely. But I think a lot of the growers and landholders that we have coming through are now realising there's so much more in it. You know, we can develop a map or a ortho mosaic model or a digital elevation model to kind of implement that into your property plan. But with that comes so many job opportunities that I guess particularly as us young ones are starting to see come through because in five years time, you know, who knows where the industry is going to be. And at the moment we've got positions for programmers. We're looking at weed identification and that sort of thing. A lot of data analysis and there's a lot that goes on in the background to make this industry keep moving forwards. Ben, there seems to be a misconception about farming that you have to be born into a farm or um, be a generational farmer to be in, in agriculture. 
what other opportunities are there for kids, either rural, but also metro? Yeah, it's changed a lot, you know. Uh, the world's changing, connectivity has changed the way that you guys live your life. So really now, there's older farmers like myself who we don't have the skills, we're not digital natives. And it's about young people who've got a passion for the environment, for science, uh, but really want to be involved with agriculture. The opportunity as much as the challenge is you can get in and help an older farmer who maybe doesn't understand the tech. You might be operational on farm, helping operate some equipment, or you might be working more on that data processing side, but it's really about following your passion. And that's what we found. Yes. You know, Brooke was the one who tapped us on the shoulder and said that she was coming back. And since Brooke's joined our team, we've doubled our turnover. Things change when young people come in and, and you guys bring your, um, your passion and you start to drive a, a traditional industry. So the opportunities, who knows where it's gonna be, but no longer do you need to own a farm to be in farming. Brooke, in agriculture technology, we're really moving towards the food and fiber and food technologies, agricultural technologies, and there are so many opportunities for young people, especially school leavers. Um, the statistics says there's about six jobs for every one person leaving um, education. That's so many opportunities. Can you um, elaborate on that? Yeah, of course. So um, yeah, I think the biggest thing coming out of school is don't be afraid to give it a go. I mean, I was fresh out of school, went to uni, absolutely loved it, um, stepped into corporate ag. And I remember someone telling me <laughs> at a lecture one day, you have made seven major career changes in your life. I was like, I'm not gonna do that. I'm 23 and I'm in my third at the moment. So I did a bit of corporate ag, typical office job, um, went across into mining for a little stint and then came back into ag tech. Um, but I guess, yeah, just jump into it. There are so many jobs available. We're screaming for labor, but like we were saying and the benefits of it, for everyone that's on farm, there is so much data collection and analysis to actually make a decision and keep moving things forwards. Um, but there is so many educational workshops, there's webinars, so there is so much information out there. If you don't feel that you're up to a position, just be willing to learn and the world's your oyster. And during uh, our COVID times, that sort of brought those opportunities up because we were more connected with being able to do Zooms and webinars and all these small mini courses are coming about. So again, the jobs are really at everyone's fingertips, isn't it? A hundred percent. And I think um, the big thing, particularly stepping out of school is the power of networking. So, I mean, just across our positions, you know, we've got connections within ag and we touch so many industries. Like if you're not quite sure where you want to go, there's opportunities in horticulture, viticulture, livestock, we've got cotton growers. They all have different needs. So guys, what actually is involved with uh, drone technology? Well, it's really about innovative technologies have maybe four stages and there's a, a workplace or a, a career path for each of those. So you might be a drone operator who goes out and does the data acquisition. What's involved? And it's high tech, it's high skill. And that's where it all begins. It's about quality. But then from there, it's about data processing, isn't it? Yeah, 100%. And so for every hour you spend in the field capturing that data, whether it's yourself or a farmer or a client of yours, you then have to sit and analyse that data. So part of that is, for example, I did a job down in some national parks and did all of the footage and whatnot, captured the images. But for that, you then need to be sitting down and actually stitching that together and then analysing it to make an on-farm decision. And once you've got that process data and we're talking about GIS standard data so yeah it's industry standard so it's repeatable reusable the value then is maybe for the next level is the agronomist so not the farmer but the agronomist who as Brooke said is it's using that skill to analyze the data but make an application plan and then the final step is maybe uh, producing or sending that plan back to the farmer like Pat who can drop it into their large scale machine that covers hundreds or thousands of hectares for a precision plan or a variable rate plan. And that's where the efficiencies are. And that's what's driving it. But what's exciting, there's different layers in this whole program. Some of it's on farm, some of it's more the data processing analytics, some of it's the science in agronomy. 
and all of those are key parts before it reaches back to Pat's machine where it's working in the paddock. So artificial intelligence, AI, I mean this is something that was never a part of my vocabulary. How is AI working with drones and where is it going to go in the future, Brooke? Yeah, so we're seeing these modern drones are capturing such high quality imagery. It's just the perfect feeding into AI and seeing where it's going to go. And what we're learning now is the science around AI is actually ideal for pairing, as Brooke says, with drone data. Because what has happened in the past, most AI is, you know, it's come out of universities, it's coming out of research. And if you just go and do a Google search on simple things like weed identification, or right at the moment, biosecurity is a, a key topic. Talk about uh, AI for animal identification using things like infrared. It's already happening in research. This whole space is gonna grow. And AI and machine learning is important, but also the ability of teaming. So pairing the drone and the data it's acquiring through companion computers to feed directly to devices on the ground. Check it out, there's so much information out there and this is exciting and it's changing day by day. So guys, thank you so much for your time today. Um, after all this talk about drones, I'm getting a little bit excited to see one up in the air and uh, show your expertise. Let's do it. Let's go fly.